In previous tutorials so far, we've been talking about some of the pitfalls of using just the volatility of past returns and measuring the risk of a trading strategy. We also spoke briefly about why the normal distribution is not appropriate to model market returns, as there are often dynamics in the market that demonstrate, uh, the where rare events demonstrate more leptocurtic distributions than the normal distribution is um, uh, valid for, and therefore using normal distribution, the normal distribution to model returns from a value at risk assessment perspective is not appropriate either. To, to illustrate the problem of using the volatility of past returns, we, we went through this example in a previous tutorial where we had a, a fantastic looking trading strategy with very small peak to trough drawdowns that had amassed 20% returns over a very short period of three months. And in this particular trading strategy, this trader was assuming very high risk per trade holding it for very short durations and operating the trading strategy during periods of very low volatility. The specifics of the trading strategy were that um, the trader was taking five pips off the table each time at a leverage of 20 to 1 on the trade, amassing 1% per trade if the trade went well. And the stop loss was set at 100 pips to let the trade breathe in order to arrive at the five pip profit target. Now the trader is going along smoothly, no problem up until this point in time. And had the investor been looking, been looking at these returns prior to the apocalypse that ensued later, the invest and, and using just the volatility of past returns, the investor would undoubtedly have developed an incomplete picture as to the true risk that such a trading strategy could pose to the investor. There was no way for the investor to predict or even fathom that such a trading strategy is even capable of producing a drawdown of this magnitude, let alone uh, the velocity at which that drawdown took place in the span of one trade. Now what happened in that one trade was that for whatever reason the market during that one trade uh, reverted very aggressively against the trader with a lot of volatility, a lot more than the trader was expecting given the trading strategy specifics and it resulted in the stop loss being hit. When the stop loss of 100 pips was hit, it resulted in a 20% drawdown in one single trade that effectively wiped out the entire track record amassed up until that point in time. So the moral of that story was that you can't simply look at the volatility of past returns because they don't represent the true risk of the trading strategy, that you have to take a look at the risk assumed by the trader in arriving at that track record to begin with. So this motivated the discussion of some additional concepts such as leverage and the volatility of the instrument being traded. We talked about how it is simply not the same thing to say that uh, a 20 to 1 leveraged trade on the euro dollar is the same as a 20 to 1 leveraged trade on the Aussie dollar Japanese yen for example. Why? Because the volatility of the euro dollar is significantly less than the volatility of the Aussie dollar Japanese yen. So even if you're assuming the same level of leverage on each trade, the risk of taking a 20 to 1 uh, trade on the euro dollar is, is less than the risk of taking a 20 to 1 uh, leverage trade on the Aussie dollar Japanese yen as a result of those differing volatilities. So this then created uh, a slight complication in matters that now we have to not consider just the volatility of fast returns, that we cannot simply rely on leverage as it's an inappropriate measure of the risk assumed on any given trade and that volatility of the instrument being traded is also important. So all of this motivated the need for us at DarwinX to engineer a metric that encapsulated all this information into one universal value, whereby we could normalize the risk assumed by a trader on any given position against the risk that the trader could assume on a reference asset um, that we chose as the euro dollar over the course of the last one year worth of euro dollar data when evaluating the deleverage of any given position from that position. The formula we defined as deleverage equals the volatility of the asset or the position normalized by the volatility of the euro dollar using a reference period of one year from the position's entry point. Why did we need this? Because we'd like to eventually be able to approximate value at risk in a way that encapsulates the risk that the investor would have at least um, would have not been able to fathom had they been looking just at the volatility of past returns to provide a figure for value at risk that is more representative of the true value at risk that the, the true risk that this trading strategy could serve to the investor were they to invest in something like this despite the beautiful looking trajectory up until the point that the investor may have gone into this gone with an investment. So in order to take this conversation forwards as to how we use the deleverage calculated for each position um, 
uh, at DarwinX to better approximate value at risk, we have to consider a few additional things. So if you've been to the DarwinX platform on any Darwin listing, you'll have um, uh, investment attributes listed for the given Darwin. Uh, and one of those will be risk adjustment called RA that is available as a button on the top, uh, top right at this point in time of, a, of any given Darwin listing or available as a tab at the bottom should you click on investable attributes. Once you click on this, you arrive at a chart that looks like this where the y-axis is deleverage and the x-axis is duration. And the chart is divided into fixed time intervals and each bubble that you see on this chart represents a position of deleverage this much and duration this much, depending on where that position is on the chart. So for example, this position here, let's imagine that number is seven and that's 12 minutes. Then this position here had a duration of less than 15 minutes and had a deleverage of seven. What this chart is capturing is, for, is, is the last 45 market days worth of risk-taking behavior on the part of the trader. So the number of positions, all the positions you see here are positions that have been taken by the trader over the last 45 market days and that is the reference period that we use uh, as a representative of the trader's most recent risk um, profile. Now, given that we have all of this posi uh, positional data over the last 45 market day reference period available to us, and given that we have the axes of deleverage and duration accompanying each position, each position also contains some additional data that you can hover with your mouse over and it presents that data to you. But for the purposes of calculating value at risk, we need only concern ourselves with the deleverage and duration at this point in time. Now, given that each position has uh, a duration and a deleverage value, and if you recall from previous tutorials on what deleverage represents, taking, um, let's imagine if a, if a trading position has a deleverage of X, and you'll recall from our previous tutorial that it effectively means it is the equi equivalent of taking a leveraged X to one position trade on the euro dollar, the reference asset, using returns data from the last one year. Bearing all of that in mind, we can construct a table here where each position and its duration and its associated deleverage is presented. Given that we know that the deleverage of a trading position is the equivalent of saying taking an X to one leveraged position on the reference asset over the last one year worth of price data, we can then effectively simulate, conduct Monte Carlo simulations on just the euro dollar using the risk behavior as exhibited by the trader over this last 45 market day period that risk behavior being quantified by duration and leverage, effective leverage on the euro dollar, were we to take a trade on the euro dollar using that uh, duration and leverage mix over the last one year. By doing so, we're able to simulate what that risk would have been on the euro dollar. And in the next tutorial, we're going to go into the specifics of how to go about um, conducting these simulations and certain factors that we have to consider when um, calculating value at risk because if you recall, we are using a reference period of 45 market days, which, by the way, is a proprietary decision at DarwinX, as we believe from our research, that the last 45 market days uh, worth of risk-taking behavior is representative of the most recent risk profile of the trader, where it is at this point in time. And the, the issue that we have to work around is that we have to calculate value at risk at a confidence interval of 95%, but over a fixed time horizon of one month. So in the next part of this tutorial, we'll go through the specifics of how we conduct these simulations, um, bearing those two factors in mind, and show you how that's done at DarwinX. See you in the next tutorial.